Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So imagine a scenario where a $1,500 problem could potentially be a $300 opportunity for you and your customer would be thrilled to pay for it. Okay, now picture doing this without even seeing your customer in person, okay? So today what I wanna show you is how to make this common challenge in Mercedes a win-win situation for you and your customer. So what you're gonna be learning today is how to use the IM508 and XP400 to replace an electronic steering lock emulator on a Mercedes-Benz C300 from 2008 to 2014. And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent all-tail diagnostic consultant. I align people with the best tool packages and give them the support that you see in this training video, okay? So this is what you're gonna be learning today. The tools required to complete this procedure, symptoms of a faulty electronic steering lock in a Mercedes, what to do if the shifter is stuck in park, and how to connect and configure the ESL emulator, okay? So what we're gonna be using today is the Autel IM508, and then we're gonna be using the XP400 and the G-Box 2, your DB15 cable, the original EIS module, and the ESL emulator, and also a working key and a blank key. Now, for those of you who don't know what an emulator is, it's a specialized tool that replicates the function of the original electronic ignition switch. That device is really expensive, and what this does, it took out all the mechanical components to it, and it, it, it's a, just a toned down version of what the original ESL would be, okay? So, some of the common symptoms of a bad electronic steering lock would be an engine that won't start even if you turn the key, no automatic steering lock when you insert the key into the ignition, you may hear noises coming from the steering lock itself, and no lights on the dash when you turn the key into position two, okay? And if the car refuses to start due to a bad ESL, then tr the transmission might be in uh, like a locked state. So you won't be able to shift into drive or reverse. So what you should do is, um, you know, get the sh locate the shifter. If you lift up the cover, there's gonna be like a little uh, release clipper there, okay? You can use like a screwdriver or you know, anything long that can um, release that. And then you can at least get it out of park and move the vehicle to where you need it to be, okay? So this is gonna be our initial uh, connection. So we have the IM508 with the USB cable into the XP400. And then we have our G-Box 2 that's connected to the power and our special cable that's connected directly to the EIS, all right? So step one, testing the ignition switch and key. Now, why is this important, okay? So testing a key is basically like making sure a remote you know, matches your, your television, okay? If they don't speak the same language, you know, your car won't start or unlock. So it's a quick check just to make sure everything's all working okay and in sync. So we're gonna go to Emo, accept the terms, we're gonna to go to Mercedes, and we're gonna to go to manual selection. And then from here, we're gonna go C-Class, 2008 to 2014. All right, we have a confirmation, we're gonna click yes. Okay, so we're gonna to go to control unit, and we're gonna to go to EIS tools on the upper left. All right, now we're gonna test the EIS status key and working key. We're gonna click that option. All right, and then we're gonna go on bench because we're doing this on the bench with the G box. Okay, we're gonna read the prompt here. Click okay. Now we're gonna go to check out the wiring diagram just so you guys will know how this thing's supposed to be set up, okay? So this is on the vehicle. We're gonna scroll down to the uh, G box. So right here is our electronic 
uh, ignition switch, okay? And if you look at the ignition switch, you'll have this number on there, okay? And this is your D1, DB15 cable, so just make sure the ground goes there, your power goes there, your can high and can low go there, and that's how you get your initial uh, connection, okay? We'll do this one later. All right, so let's escape out of here. And we're gonna go to test EIS status. So we're gonna get the original working key, put it in the ignition and give it a nice uh, twist. All right, so it identified as a W204, which is good. I mean, it's reading and click okay. And then we're gonna get this other prompt. Just, you can just ignore this one, okay. And then we're gonna go to test working key. We're gonna see if this passes the test. Okay, so it, it's a W204. All right, so please insert the key into the infrared keyhole on the programmer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that with the original key, click yes. And then we're gonna get a, please insert the key into the EIS and remove it three times. So take it out one, two, three. Okay, so once you do that three times, we're gonna go ahead and click yes. Okay, and then we're gonna put it back into the XP400 infrared keyhole programmer. Click yes. And then we should get a result. Okay, so this key is working on the vehicle. Okay, so both of these uh, passed. And now we can go on to the next step, which is add the key to get the password. All right. So we're going to click escape. And then we're going to click escape one more time. One more time escape again and then now we're going to go to add key so we're going to click add key we're doing this on the bench via gbox all right we're going to click w204 because what we're working with process and so this is just the same setup guys nothing different okay it's just giving us the basic instructions okay and then now it's going to start the reading the EIS data. Okay, so we're going to click begin. And we're going to follow the prompt. So establishing vehicle communication. That was done. Okay, so detecting frequency. So get the key and put it close to the XP400 and press any like button on it. Okay, once you do that, it'll take us to the next prompt. Okay, then it's going to ask us to insert the key into the um, infrared keyhole on the XP400. And when you do that, we're going to click OK. All right, so we're going to click OK. And then while this is processing, is this, a, is this ignition key a smart key? We're going to click no, it's not a smart key in our situation. So it gives us a status of how many uh, number of possible keys. We're going to click OK. All right, so we're on to step three, detecting frequency. Please put the blank key. So now you're going to get the blank key and move it close to the XP400 and press any button on the key. And then once you do that, we're going to take that blank key and put it back into the infrared keyhole on the XP400 and press OK. OK. And then uh, communicating with key, please wait. All right, so. Is there a key password? No, there is not. That's what we're trying to get. So press OK to enter the password calculation process. So we're going to go ahead and start this process and follow the prompts. No, after a, the key password is calculated, it, can, it may be required to insert, remove the ignition for a couple of times before it can start the vehicle. Okay, so we'll keep note of that and just follow the prompts. All right, so insert the working key into the EIS and wait for five seconds. So we're going to go ahead and put it in and wait for five seconds. All right, so we're letting it count down. Four, three, two, one. All right, so that's done. So we're going to pull the ignition key out now. Establishing vehicle communication. Okay, insert the ignition key into the EIS and wait for two seconds. 
Okay, so put it back. One, two. Okay, we're done with that. Please confirm whether the key can be turned to the on position. So take out the original working key, put it in the EIS and make sure it can turn on. Okay. All right, and once you do that, we're gonna click okay. All right, after pulling the ignition, take the key out, insert it into the infrared keyhole. So take that original key, put it back into the XP400, into the infrared keyhole, and click OK. All right, so getting password and pro pro progress. So this could take some time, you guys. Um, for demonstration sake, we're not gonna wait 30 minutes, but it could take, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. So now that we have the uh, password, what I'm gonna do is just take a picture of it because we're gonna need it later, okay? So now that I got that in there, all right, insert the ignition key into the EIS and wait for 30 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're just gonna wait for the countdown. While this is counting down, you guys, let me ask you, do you guys know how to do any uh, bench procedures like this where people can send you certain components and you can do them on the bench without seeing? Let me know in the comments like what type of services you offer where they can do that. All right, so three, two, one. All right, password calculation complete. So that's done. Okay, generating key file. Please wait. All right, so let me explain something here because it, it's kind of confusing and I'm just gonna give you two options, okay? Let's say your customer is on a budget and they don't actually need another key. They just want you to, you know, do this uh, electronic steering lock configuration, okay? If that's the case, you don't need to actually add the key. Like you can click okay and just don't follow the prompts, okay? Now, if your customer wants an additional key, if you wanted to charge them for that, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna click okay and just follow the prompts because it's gonna write that uh, key file into the key and it's gonna give you some prompts to um, you know make sure that that key has been added, okay? So in this case, our client's on a budget and I'm not going to register this key uh, to the vehicle, all right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click okay, but I'm not gonna put put the, uh, the new key in there, okay? I'm just gonna click cancel. You see, it's not detecting the key. I'm just gonna click cancel. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. All right, so I'm gonna click escape. Click okay, because we got our password, okay? So now that we got our password, our next step is to read the EIS data from the original EIS, okay? So we're gonna go click read EIS data on the upper left. We're gonna go OBD, and then we're gonna go to on bench with Gbox. All right, and then we're gonna click W204, okay? So we're gonna scroll down. All right, same same setup. Okay, so check ESL information. Okay, we can review it there. Let's go ahead and click OK. Do you want to save the current EIS data? Yes, we do. So we're going to click Yes, and it's going to automatically save it into a default path. All right, we're going to click OK, and then we successfully completed that step. So now we're going to write the ESL data and let me show you how it's done. So from here, we're gonna click escape. We're gonna go to ESL tools and then we're gonna go to look at the, the diagram. So this is where we're gonna get our emulator. Okay, and we're gonna connect it accordingly. So let's scroll down. Okay, so there's our ESL. Okay, and we're gonna connect it just how it says here, all right? And then once that's done, once that's done, you're gonna see, here, here it is right here. You're gonna see um, how it looks like right here. 
Okay, so this is gonna be our setup. You see there, there's our ESL right there. Okay, so we're gonna click Escape, and then we're gonna go to W204, and we're using the G-Box, so we're gonna click Yes. Establishing Vehicle Communication, and then we're gonna go to Right ESL. Okay, it's on the left there. Writing ESL data. Okay, and then once this is done, okay, we can look at the data there. And we're gonna click OK. And then we're gonna open the EIS and EEPROM folder. All right, and then EIS data. And then we're gonna select our file. We're gonna click OK to confirm. Loading files. Okay, this may, and then we're gonna click OK. And now we're gonna get our uh, password that we took on our phone. So let me go ahead and digits in here. Okay. All right, we're gonna click OK. Writing ESL data. Now, if you look at the emulator, it's probably gonna be turning green. It's gonna be blinking. And then succeed, succeeded in writing. Okay, so we finish. we finished the job, okay? So this is probably about maybe a 20, 30 minute job if you're, you're new to it, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple, you know? You're gonna test the key and the ignition switch first, okay? Read the ES data from the original ES module add a key to generate the, the the password okay and if you want to not add a key you don't have to do it if you want to add a key you can choose that option as well then you're going to write the esl data to the emulator and then verify that the process was successful and troubleshoot if there's any issues so there you have it guys you guys now know how to do this and it's a big problem what you need to do is let people know that you have this capability Okay, um, it doesn't make sense having all this knowledge and no one knows that you can do it. All right, so get out there, let people know, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.